What's up guys, JV2017 here, and I'm bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. And this time I'm continuing my companion guide series with Deacon, who's probably my favorite companion in the game. In this video, we'll discuss how to get Deacon, what his special stats look like, how to max out his affinity, and finally the effectiveness of his companion perk. First, let's take a look at Deacon's background. It's hard to go into detail on his past without dropping some serious spoilers, so I'm going to be brief here. Deacon is a spy for the railroad, which of course is the underground undercover operation that seeks to save the synths from the Institute slavery. Before the Soul Survivor even meets the railroad, Deacon can actually be found spying on the player in several locations throughout the game. So he can be found when you first meet Piper to get into Diamond City, he's one of the guards there. He can also be found as kind of a drifter kind of character in Good Neighbor, and also he is a caravan kind of trader in Bunker Hill. So he wears all these disguises, he's a very cool, fun kind of character. Deacon can be found in the Old North Church, which is where the Railroad HQ is located. So first, when you find the Railroad, of course, you'll have to solve that puzzle, which of course, you know, spells out Railroad, not very complicated there. And after you talk to Desdemona, Deacon will emerge and start talking to you, and then he will give you the quest Tradecraft. And so Tradecraft is the quest you actually have to complete in order to have Deacon as your companion. And additionally, after you complete Tradecraft, you have to agree to join the railroad. Now, I want to put a disclaimer on here. Agreeing to join a faction does not mean you're committing to that faction. You can actually tell all the factions in the game that you agree to join them. You know, all of them. You can say that, but you don't have to commit to them at that exact moment. There is a point of no return, and I've made a factions video quite a long time ago kind of explaining how this works. But you can say, hey, I'll join you, and then not actually commit to them later. So don't worry about that. If you tell the railroad you're going to join them, you don't actually have to commit yet. So the gameplay that you're seeing throughout this video is from Tradecraft. It takes about 30 minutes to an hour. It involves a little bit of combat, but not too bad. It's a pretty fun mission, so that's about how long it takes to get Deacon. His companion special stats are 5, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, and 8 for a total of 57 special points. So not really high up there. It's pretty much par with the rest of the human companions in the game. Also, he has a 150 carry weight and no immunities. Again, pretty standard for most of the human-based you know, companions in the game. So something interesting and unique about him beyond those special stats. Again, I've mentioned before, I don't think they affect a lot with the character, but I've read that he has the highest sneak ability. That's something I've read, I believe, on Reddit somewhere around the internet, but I haven't actually noticed this in my own uh, you know, practices within the game. So if I have Deacon as a companion, it doesn't seem that he's, you know, sneakier than any other companion. Every companion in the game actually comes with sneak rank three or four, I believe, by default. And then for some reason, Dogmeat has the highest rank, I believe, rank five of sneak for whatever reason. I'm not sure about that. But really with Deacon, I haven't noticed this personally that he's sneakier than everyone else. He's a spy based character. And even his, you know, companion perk would say, or you would suggest, you would think, hey, he is the sneakiest character, but I haven't seen it personally. As with every other companion in the game, Deacon also has an affinity, and this is the game's loyalty system for your companion. So imagine a, an invisible meter out of a thousand points, and each different action that you make, Deacon will make a judgment on it. You know, player actions, choices, and dialogue will affect Deacon if he's your companion, he, if he's rolling with you. So say you're nice to somebody, and, you know, that meter will go up a little bit. If you're, you know, violent, it'll go down a little bit. So that's kind of how this system works, and it's invisible, you can't really see it, unless you're on PC and use a console command. So you really just have to kind of keep repeating actions that Deacon likes if you want to increase his affinity and get up to the maximum. And once you've got it at the maximum affinity, that'll grant you his companion perk, which is something we'll talk about towards the end of the video. Unfortunately, you cannot romance Deacon. It's really quite unfortunate. He's kind of my man crush of Fallout 4. I'm quite disappointed, you know, that I can't romance him with my female character here. But hey, what are you going to do? Fortunately, we can actually predict the behavior of our companions, and Deacon has a certain general affinity that we can follow, and of course, we make these actions in the game. He will like them or dislike them. So he likes it when the player is nice or mean. Now, you may be wondering, that sounds like the opposite. You know, those are opposites. How does that make sense? Well, there are certain situations where you can be nice and not necessarily mean, or mean but not necessarily nice. And I think that's really what it's referring to. It's not really an either or thing. It's kind of like you can be nice in this situation, mean in another situation. He'll like both of those. And also, he dislikes when the player is violent. So, 
if there's a situation where you can not be violent, I'm sure he would prefer that. If there's a situation where you can actually choose to be violent and murder non-hostiles, for example, he will not like that. You will see Deacon hated that or disliked that. He also has more specific affinity predisposition. So certain things you can do out in the world, he will react in this way. So he likes it when the player donates items, hacks terminals, which makes sense since he hacks a ter terminal in the first mission that you meet him, Tradecraft, that you're seeing on the screen. He also likes it when you heal dog meat. This is something we're gonna take advantage of in order to boost his affinity a little bit later in the video. He also likes it when you pick locks, any locks. It could be a lock out in the world or a lock in Diamond City from, you know, a trader's house. You know, he likes it when you pick any lock. He doesn't discriminate on locks, so that's interesting as well. He also likes it when you persuade for more caps. So if you are a high charisma character and you like to persuade for more caps after doing a mission or a quest or whatever it may be, he likes it when you do that as well. On the flip side, he dislikes it when the player gets a chem addiction or uses chems. So in general, if you're going to be using a lot of chems, then Kate is probably a better companion to bring along with you. If you use them around Deacon, it'll lower his affinity and it'll be a lot tougher in order to get his maximum affinity. He also doesn't like it when you eat corpses. Not a lot of companions like that except for Strong, because Strong is weird, obviously. And then finally, he doesn't like it when you murder non-hostiles. So I would say overall, from his affinity predispositions, I would say that Deacon is a morally good companion. He likes a good character. He likes when the Soul Survivor does a lot of nice things, good things, except for maybe, you know, some morally great things like <laughs> picking locks and getting into stuff, hacking terminals, but generally he's a morally good companion. I'd say that it's fairly easy to increase his affinity by following these choices. If you're playing a morally good character, you have Deacon around, naturally his affinity is gonna go all the way up to the maximum after a certain amount of time. But let's say you just wanna grab Deacon and get his companion affinity perk. You just wanna get it really quickly. You wanna boost that affinity up. So we're gonna look at that right now. This is a very easy method. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. So. What you'll need to do to prepare for this is first you need to get dog meat who's at Red Rocket. You probably already gotten dog meat by the time, you know, you're watching this video, I would hope. Once you've got dog meat and Deacon, send both of them to your settlement of choice. I'm sending them to Sanctuary because that's very easy. Also, make sure that dog meat is your active companion. So what you want to do here is send Deacon to Sanctuary, make sure he's there, and also have dog meat with you as your active companion. And also you might want to make a bell. That's something in, I believe, the resources category, which is weird under miscellaneous you can make the bell and keep it there once you ring the bell all of your companions will gather in a certain location this is just to make sure that everyone's close and nearby so the method here is to shoot dog meat while he's your companion if you shoot dog meat and then down him and then use a stim pack to heal dog meat then deacon will like that action and you can actually take advantage of that so what you'll need to do is shoot dog meat obviously get him down heal him with a stim pack and then quick save after you quick save, you want to quickly go back into your menu and click load and reload that same quick save again and repeat the same process over and over and over. You will need several stim packs for this because each time you do this, you're going to use a stim pack. But as you repeat this, he will like it every single time as long as he's close enough. That's why I suggest that you make the bell in order to make sure that Deacon comes near the bell and witnesses this action and then he'll like it every single time. Once you've successfully maxed out his affinity, you will get Cloak and Dagger, and this is his companion affinity perk. And so what this does for you, the player, is it gives you plus 40% stealth boy duration, which is pretty nice, but the real nice part is plus 20% sneak attack damage. So this essentially means that to your sneak attack multiplier, you'll get an extra 0.2. That's not a ton. I'll be honest, at a higher level, that doesn't seem like a, a lot, like much at all. But if you factor in, hey, am I playing a melee sneak character or a range sneak character? With melee, of course, you get a higher multiplier, so this might not be as effective, but with a range sneak character, an extra .2 is kind of nice to have. And if you get this early in the game and you don't have ninja, for example, this is really nice to have. This is a really nice boost. And clearly this is geared towards more of the sneak based character this doesn't help you if you don't sneak at all but even if you don't make a sneak based character like with agility and ninja and you know mr sandman with silenced weapons if you don't go for that and you're still sneaking around this is still helpful this is still a generally helpful you know kind of boost to have with any sort of character i sneak around with every single character that i have regardless if i focus in sneak or mr sandman or ninja that's personally how i play so i think this is a very useful perk overall 
Deacon does not have an extra side quest, so you don't have to worry about that. But I also get a lot of questions about gearing up your companions. And this is generally what I tell you guys. I don't mess with weapons on my companions because the default companion weapon always has infinite ammo. You don't have to touch it. I believe Deacon has a combat rifle or a hunting rifle with a scope on it, very similarly to McCready. So the problem is if you give Deacon a gun, he'll need ammo for it. That kind of drains on your own ammo resources. So it's really up to you if you have ammo to spare with a certain weapon and it's a really good weapon, give it to him. It makes sense, right? But you don't have to. He'll have infinite ammo for his default weapon. And as for armor, you can give Deacon armor if you want to increase his, you know, um, damage resistances and whatnot. However, you get to miss out on the fact that Deacon changes what he's wearing all the time. Since he is a spy, since he is spying constantly, he changes his outfit. It's hilarious. Sometimes he's completely naked. Sometimes he's wearing like a white polo and some khakis. Sometimes he's dressed like a safari guy. It's crazy. It's hilarious. And I really love it. That's one of the things I really like about Deacon as well. So fast travel to a different location, you'll see Deacon in a different outfit. And I just love it. It's hilarious. And so I don't mess with his armor. You can certainly do that. It's more practical to do so. So I'd like to know after watching this video, will you use Deacon? Will you go out and get him? And is he useful for your character? If you're a sneak based character, he's definitely more useful. If you're any kind of character, I still think he's useful. Also, you know, is it worth getting his companion perk? I think personally that the, that companion perk is useful for any kind of character build, like I said before. And that's why I would rank Deacon probably in the top third of companions. There's 13 companions in the game. I would probably say Deacon is around five or four, something around there. He's below like Dance, Preston, and you know, some of that immediate bonus, you know, uh, companions in the game, like McCready is around there too. But it's still really good. It's useful for any build, especially if you're sneaking, um, regardless of your character build. So I'd like to know what you guys think. Share all of that in the comments below. All right, guys, today I shared everything you need to know about Deacon in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.